For several weeks now, North Korea has been completely blocked from the internet. The crazy part is it appears that this is just the work of only one attacker. This is an absolutely wild story, so let's start from the very beginning. It all started whenever Kim Il-sung, father of Kim Jong-il, took over. No, not that early. It all started last year. We actually covered this on the channel last year, but North Korean attackers were attempting to socially engineer cybersecurity researchers. It appeared at the time that their goal was to trick researchers into giving them their research. It also appears that they were trying to get cybersecurity researchers to install malware that the North Korean spies were providing, which gave them a back door onto the researchers' machines. This attack was pretty malicious because it took advantage of how open the cybersecurity community is and how collaborative cybersecurity researchers are. Because of that openness and because the North Koreans were posing as other cybersecurity researchers, that trust allowed them greater access access to be able to share the malware that they were trying to get the researchers to install, as well as collect information about what the researchers themselves were doing. And that takes us to the guy who is removing North Korea from the internet. He's a cybersecurity researcher going under the pseudonym of P4X. There is a really excellent interview that Andy Greenberg with Wired did. You can check that out. There's a link down in the description. P4X was one of those cybersecurity researchers that at the time believed that they were working with a fellow re cybersecurity researcher who in fact was a North Korean spy. Whenever the North Korean spy attempted to give them the malware to upload onto their machine, P4X noticed that this installed a back door and that tipped him off to the fact that this was in fact an attack. Now it's never advised to try to hack a hacker and P4X pretty much proved why. Upset about the attack and upset about how it was subsequently handled, P4X took matters into his own hands. And he did so by hitting the like button. Just kidding, he conjured up all the hacker fury that he possibly could and he unleashed it on North Korea. After taking some time doing some reconnaissance and enumeration on the North Korean infrastructure that is internet facing, he found a number of vulnerabilities with well-known exploits that allowed for denial of service attacks. He even went as far as to relate this to a small to medium size penetration test, which is kind of funny, being that North Korea is a country and he is relating it to a small to mid size penetration test. I mean, granted, it is North Korea, so it's not like they have the most robust internet presence in the world, but still pretty wild. P4X was able to script all the things that he needed to do to be able to enumerate additional systems and find vulnerabilities, as well as to maintain the attack and, and keep North Korean systems off the internet. This, in effect, has caused huge outages on North Korean assets online. It is a denial of service attack. Now, truthfully, denial of service attacks really 90% of the time aren't really that big of a deal. We've talked about this before on this channel as well. They're basically no different from a from a defacement. It's a temporary issue, but once the attack itself is over, unless it's distracting from a separate attack where there's some sort of data exfiltration or malware uploading, I mean, it really, it's not that big of a deal. The one caveat would be with something like critical infrastructure or something like that, where, where downtime is completely unacceptable. That said, it does create a pretty visible human reaction. For instance, Wired and a number of other agencies reported about this attack and although it doesn't really lead to anything significant it is still very very visible and public. P4X says that he wants to continue the attack and even dive into just directly exploiting North Korean systems and he also stated that he wanted to get other activists engaged in this project. Now this is a perfect time for me to state on this channel that that this channel does not recommend any illegal or unethical activity so please do stay on the legal and ethical side of hacking. Also, it, whenever it comes to North Korea, they are a very brutal and violent and oppressive regime, and they do not always operate just within their own borders. For instance, Kim Jong-un's own brother was assassinated a couple of years ago, and so do be safe, be smart, be ethical. That's, that's all I'm going to say on that. Now, believe it or not, this isn't the first time that non-state actors have attacked North Korea. Anonymous, back in 2013, stated that they had also hacked the North Korean government. However, some of those claims are disputed. And before you think that North Korea doesn't exist on the internet, it sure does, and it also engages in cyber activity. The most famous example was the Sony hack back in 2014. You may remember the movie The Interview, where Dave Franco and Seth Rogen go and interview Kim Jong-un, and it subsequently results in the assassination of Kim Jong-un. Yeah, that didn't really uh, that didn't really get reacted to very well by Kim Jong-un. Needless to say, his reaction channel was quite vivid on this issue. 
Kim Jong-un had a reaction video. That would be wild. Anyway, that resulted in a huge data breach and a lot of lost money from Sony. Even more recent, even within the past couple weeks, North Korea has been attributed to a massive $37 million crypto heist. North Korean hackers appear to be more incentivized by money and not information or some of the other things that you would normally associate with state-backed hackers. The reason for this is because their economy is largely shut down by sanctions. And so one of the methods that their government attempts to skirt by the sanctions and make some additional money is through cyber crime and other forms of crime. And that's where things like ransomware and these massive cyber attacks and thefts of economic assets come in. That said, I mean, the cost of running a government compared to what they're making through cyber crime, yeah, I mean, there, there has to be a lot more done outside of cyberspace. One of the other things that North Korea wants to do in cyberspace is engage in misinformation and disinformation. That is something that we talk about in this video right here. And so you should go watch that right now. Also, you should like this video because that's something that Kim Jong-un would not do, but you should do it anyway. And subscribe for more content just like this. See ya.